And thank you for listening to today's episode of JTCast, the official podcast of the Journal of Athletic Training. I'm your host, Luke Donovan. For the second episode of the month, I will discuss another article from the upcoming issue of JT titled Prospective Study of Concussions and Health Outcomes in High School Football Players by Dr. Timothy McGuine and colleagues from the University of Wisconsin and the University of Michigan. As a reminder, the article discussed today can be found on the JAT website, natajournals.org, and please remember that all content from JAT is open access to all readers thanks to the funding from the National Athletic Trainers Association. First step, surveying the scene. In the previous episode of the month, we discussed the findings of a study that examined the association of concussion symptom rating uh, between pediatric patients and their parents. The authors found that the total health and behavior inventory score was highly correlated between the patients and parents, although large discrepancies in reporting did exist in some cases. The findings of this study may aid clinicians with setting appropriate expectations regarding concussion symptoms and return to play timing for both patients and parents. Today's episode will continue to discuss concussion-based outcomes, but primarily focus on high school football players. Within the United States, High school football accounts for more than 40% of all sport-related concussions sustained by high school athletes. Given the high incidence, there has been an increased effort to better understand the onset, treatment, and short- and long-term effects of sport-related concussions among pediatric athletes. Studies have shown that concussion symptoms typically resolve within 7 to 10 days after injury. However, a portion of adults continue to report symptoms beyond 30 days. Moreover, other studies have reported an association between concussions and an increase in symptoms of depression and decreased health-related quality of life. With that said, many of the studies that found disablement associated with concussion enrolled participants from specialized medical settings or included patients who experienced severe and prolonged symptoms. As such, the results of those studies cannot be generalized to a focused population such as high school football players. To develop a better understanding of the impact of concussion on high school football players, the authors prospectively assessed the effects of concussion on self-reported concussion symptoms, symptom severity, depression, and health-related quality of life in a sample of high school football players. Data were collected from 31 high schools over a two-year period. To be an eligible data collection site, the school had to employ an athletic trainer on a minimum part-time basis as the athletic trainer would need to assist with data collection. To participate in the study, student-athletes needed to be a member of an interscholastic football team and report no disabling injuries that would limit their activity during the upcoming season. During preseason, participants completed a baseline form to collect demographic information and concussion history. To assess outcomes related to concussions, three separate valid, reliable, and responsive questionnaires were used. Self-reported concussion symptoms were recorded using the post-concussion symptoms scale. Depression was measured using the patient health questionnaire number 9. Health-related quality of life was measured using the pediatric quality of life 4.0 acute questionnaire. The athletic trainers employed at each school recorded the onset and characteristics of each sustained concussion that occurred over the season. Injured participants completed the same baseline surveys within 72 hours, at 7 days, at return to play, and at 3 months, 6 months, and 12 months after their concussion. Let's discuss the results. Of the 1,176 participants, 62 sustained concussions. 61% of the concussions were sustained during competition, and a similar rate of concussions were caused by collision with an opponent. An athletic trainer was on site for 89% of injuries, and 74% of players were immediately removed from play. 90% of the injured athletes pursued a return-to-play protocol under the supervision of their athletic trainer. Nearly 70% of patients reported symptom resolution within one week, while under 5% reported symptoms for greater than 28 days. The median number of sport days missed was 14. Post-concussion symptom scale scores for both symptoms and severity of symptoms were increased at injury onset and after 7 days when compared to baseline. Whereas at return to play, symptom scores were improved compared to baseline and at the 3 months post, 6 months post, and 12 months post time points, symptom scores and severity scores were similar to baseline. Specific to symptoms of depression, no differences in patient health questionnaire 9 scores were observed at any post-injury time point. 
Health-related quality of life followed similar patterns as the symptoms where the pediatric quality of life physical subscale scores were lower at injury onset in seven days after the injury and higher at return to play three months post and six months post injury than baseline. The pediatric quality of life total score and psychosocial subscore were unchanged at injury onset and seven days after the injury. At each follow-up testing time interval, these health-related quality of life scores were either unchanged or improved when compared to the pre-injury baseline scores. In summary, the study found that a sample of high school football players who sustained a sport-related concussion did not report increased measures of disablement once they returned to full sport participation. This prospective study does differ from findings of other studies that found that sport-related concussions may be associated with disablement for significant periods of time. The authors attribute the differences between studies for a few reasons. The first, and specific to measures of symptoms, the authors report that the majority of the patients in this study had symptoms resolved within 10 days, and that no patients lost consciousness during their concussive event. Both prolonged symptoms greater than 10 days and the loss of consciousness during the injury were found to be predictive of symptoms lasting for greater than 28 days. As such, the studies that found a link between concussion and prolonged symptoms enrolled patients from specialty clinics where the median time of symptom resolution was 40 days. Therefore, the patients from these studies were more likely to have sustained moderate or severe injury. Next, in specific to symptoms of depression, previous studies have found a threefold increased risk of depression of adolescents with a history of concussion. Although meaningful, this particular study was retrospective in design, which runs the, the risk of increased subject recall bias. Also, the study had a relatively short follow-up time, making it unclear as to how those symptoms of depression changed over time. When examining measures of health-related quality of life, this study did have similar findings of other studies that found that health-related quality of life in adolescents was decreased in the short term but did resolve within 30 days following injury. These findings do differ from that of collegiate and professional football players where a link between multiple concussions, lower quality of life, and neurocognitive deficits have been found. Given the differences in populations, the finding of these studies cannot be generalized to high school football players. However, these findings do suggest that following patients beyond 12 months after the concussion may be warranted to determine whether future disablement is associated with previous concussion. Overall, the authors note that the lack of increased symptoms, signs of depression, and deficits in health-related quality of life at 12 months post-concussion in these specific patients may be attributed to the concussions from this study being characterized as milder cases when compared to other studies. Also, the majority of patients worked with an athletic trainer through the return to play protocol. And per state legislation, all patients required medical clearance from a physician or athletic trainer prior to returning to sport. Considering this, access to an athletic trainer in a robust return to play protocol may be instrumental to alleviating the long-term consequences of sport-related concussions that have been previously reported. Well, that's it for today's JT Cast. Please remember to rate and subscribe to the podcast, which is available on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and Stitcher. You can find out more information about upcoming podcasts and other JT events on our Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram accounts at JT underscore NATA. Thank you for listening and keep a lookout for next month's JT Cast. Mm-hmm.